Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerdlings of all ages, we are starting off here on Daybreak, and we have a pretty exciting lineup for you because spawning over here in the top right corner, he make expand, and then he defense. Ladies and gentlemen, it is none other, the one, the only, White Ra. He will be going up against the blue Protoss here in the bottom left corner. Representing Team Millennium, a very underrated pro toss baller. Let's find out what he can do against Special Tactics Man himself. It is, of course, Millennium Feast. So let's find out, ladies and gentlemen, what the strategies are going to be. Now, of course, this is a PvP, so to an extent, the openings are almost dictated as... Uh, Basically, these guys are going to be mirroring each other's builds more or less for the first couple of minutes before we actually see any real variation, especially if both sides stay on one base. We'll occasionally see Robotics Facility versus Twilight Council kind of play come in. Uh, occasionally, we have a little bit of Stargate play, especially if Hasu likes to play. We see him go for that sort of thing a fair amount, but... There really are, it really is an open book at the moment. Gone are the days of PvP where everyone was 4-gating. Gone are the days of PvP where everyone is 3-gate robo. There is a healthy difference of opinion now, which is why the mirror matchups are getting more and more interesting to watch over time. TVT is no longer Siege Tank Viking. ZVZ is no longer always Zergling Baneling. And similarly, PvP is constantly evolving as well. And so much the better for all of us viewing at home. In the meantime, we have got the first gas being taken from White Ra right now. Not going for a super quick second gas just yet. Uh, no doubt a cybernetics core is going to get put down right about now. In fact, both sides to the second put down the same cybernetics core. So not too much to note at the moment. Feast is going to get the first scout off against White Ra. We'll see that. Hang on a second. This looks suspiciously like my build. Are you stealing my build? But of course, he will be completely... And utterly fine with this, and actually sees the timing on the second gas as well. So that's pretty useful, and Feast actually going to be grabbing his gas too, all the way back home. So things are looking all quiet on the Western Front so far in this game. We have no difference of opinion between these players at the moment. We have actually got Feast going for that first Zealot. In the meantime... White Ross saving up a little bit more and going for a Stalker. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Feast to get a further scout off in White Ross base because at least a probe can outrun a Zealot. So White Ross might be able to get a slightly later scout off. But here is what I was talking about. White Ra looks like he solemnly swears he is up to no good because we have the pylon already going down to the bottom of the map. And is Feast going to spot it? I suspect he will not. So White Ra is going to be putting a forward pylon down. I wonder what he expects to do with this. Is he actually going for an expansion right now? Because he did go up to 300 something middles per second. And no, we have the proxy robotics facility. And oh no, the probe is going to scout it. Special tactics getting scouted almost the moment they get put down here. And Feast immediately sees what White Ra is doing. So it looks like a potential warp prism harass out of that robotic facility now. And is White Ra going to go ahead with it? It looks like he is actually getting the first two shots off with that stalker as well. So that's really good, and oh no, losing the probe, although he has got the robotics facility down, so I guess most of the damage is now done at this point. White Ron needs to be careful that he doesn't lose more damage than his opponent on that Stalker, and this could be dangerous for White Ron. The Stalker goes down! Better micro from Feast there, and we do have one hit left on this Stalker, but it looks like it is not going to go down. This is a level on StarCraft Master, ladies and gentlemen, and Feast has just beaten it. But we're still going to chrono boost out the War Prism. Why? Because we can, and Feast is forced to move back into his main base. He does not want to attempt to bring down that Robotics Facility, or that Pylon for that matter, just in case the War Prism actually pops out, and White Rye is able to do a healthy amount of damage in response. We've got the Twilight Council coming down from Millennium Feast right now. Warp Gate research is complete for his three gateways, and he's going up to a fourth as well. How many gateways is White Ra on? He is on three, also going up to four. What will this Warp Prism do? It looks like he's going to be loading it up with four Zealots, but he's not actually going around the back of the base like Feast has anticipated. Feast is going to have to stay in this base for a little while because he knows a Warp Prism is incoming, and speaking of incoming, dear oh dear, came oh so close to losing it just then. Four Zealots going to be going to work on these Stalkers, but really White Ra 
Sakura is sacrificing them at this point. They are effectively cannon fodder, and now we have more warp ins coming in from White Ra. But it's three stalkers against approximately infinity here in Feast Space. There is no way he's going to be able to do this. GG immediately from White Ra. Special tactics have been defeated in game number one.